What is up, 802 Garage? I'll be honest with you. I do not want to edit a uh, super long MR2 fuel tank and pump removal video today. That's going to be more of a how-to, so not as exciting for some of my usual viewers. I'm probably going to have, like, I'd say at least three hours of footage to go through, so editing that video is going to take me uh, four to five hours. Um, it's going to be a big one, and it's, it's a pretty niche audience, just people who need to remove fuel tanks on Toyota MR2s. So, I think instead I'm going to make a vlog for today, another MR2 vlogs, and just let you guys know how it's going. I did a live stream earlier today that went really well. Uh, I had quite a few viewers. I think I had 68 views while it was going, average view duration of like 8 minutes. That's, that's really not bad for, for a small niche uh, live stream like that. So, really appreciate you all watching. Drop me a comment if you watched and if you have any tips for improving it, um, or anything that we talked about during the live stream you want to talk more about. So where I'm at right now is I did get the fuel tank dropped, I pulled it out the front, uh, and, oh, and I meant to say, unfortunately, the live stream, it went well while it was live, although I know my internet still was terrible, but it lost a huge amount of footage. It lost like the whole 60 minutes in the middle, so it doesn't have the part where I pull the fuel tank out and say it's the boy, or anything like that. So if any of y'all watched that and thought it was funny, let me know. To any of you who missed it, I'm sorry. I like pulled the whole tank out and then showed the, the fuel tank, like, oh, it's a boy. I thought I was funny. But uh, I got the fuel tank out, super psyched about that. I can now pull the fuel pump and see what's going on there. Somebody's obviously had it out at least once before because I'm pretty sure this is not factory duct tape. <laughs> and, um, this could be the issue with the fuel pump, is that the, this wire, if you see it, is just completely corroded and, and cracked and like not, not definitely not going to be carrying current as well as it should be. So maybe it's just that the pump was not getting enough uh, actual current to start. So that could be the issue. Um, I still think the pump is entirely locked up. I'm going to pull this all on video as part of my how-to, uh, and then I'll update you guys later in this vlog when I have the pump out and let you know exactly what the issue is. I'll like bench test it. And um, obviously, this wiring is going to be replaced, which is good. You know, brand new wiring, good for uh, current handling. As I said in the live stream, I do have a new pump and a fuel pressure regulator on order. If you were in the live stream, you got more of the details, but for now, I'll just tell you that. So yeah, I'm gonna get to pulling this out in my how-to, and I will give you guys an update in a bit. All right, I'm also gonna slosh the tank around a bunch to try to get out any grime that I can, and then empty it into that bucket over there. There's quite a bit of fuel in here. Call that good for fuel sloshing. It's a good thing that there's fuel in the tank because that means it's less likely to have rusted badly inside. All right, I'm now going to dump all the fuel into this bucket. Potentially a lot of rust. This fuel is not looking too good. Let me see if I can get you some better lighting. Yeah, that looks good. Lots of uh, kind of particulate matter. Oh, there's some holes in this bucket. <laughs> but yeah. Really orangey yellow. Does not smell good. Yep, so that's a lot of bad gas. Not sure what to do with it right this second. I'll probably put it in some container. But now I can get you taking at the fuel pump. All right, so I'm gonna pour all this bad gas into this gas container that already had some kind of gross stuff in it anyway. And hopefully not spill it everywhere. Oh, that worked. Yeah, me. Oh, it's because that bucket. 
Oh, he's a handcuff. <laughs> well, my foot is soaked now. Here. Try not to inhale too deep. Now, is that a three or a five gallon container? It should be a five. Let's hope. Because I got about four gallons. I just didn't want it to squirt out the back and shoot all over your head. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Wow, look at that. That's all from the <laughs> tank. Could be worse. Better to get it out. So all this silt mostly looks like it's rust, but also some dirt is from the tank because it wasn't in this bucket beforehand. Some of the little large black specks are actually from that because I emptied the gas into it, but most of that thin silt. A lot of dirt. I, I'm not so worried about dirt. I am worried about rust, and surprisingly this looks more dirty than rusty. Let's see here. I mean, there's a little bit of red color to it, but honestly it mostly looks like dirt. It looks like dirt with very fine rust. So I'm not terribly, terribly worried about that, but I will obviously be rinsing the tank out thoroughly. Now my uh, soaked foot is starting to feel a little weird, so I'm going to go change socks and wash my foot. And now I'm going to pull, and just figure out the angle. Okay, let's see the pump. Wow! Okay, and then a lot of times, towards the end, there's some interesting angles you need to use. There we go. Wow! Alrighty. So, the entire coating on the outside of the pump has turned into... I don't even know if it's rust. It almost looks like there was some kind of coating on here that hardened, and the sock is completely gone. Um, yeah, this is no good. The, this rubber has degraded entirely that lets it sit on the bottom of the tank. The lines are rusty, there's varnish. Um, this terminal is extremely corroded. The jacketing on the wiring has degraded. I, man, this is bad. Yep, yep, yep. So, definitely gonna need to clean out the inside of the tank. All right guys, so I just signed off on my uh, how-to video, so check out this pump. I don't even know what kind of a coating was on this. Um, it looks like it's rusty, which is really weird, because it's clearly a stainless pump, but it's almost like it had a metal coating on it, or maybe, I, I don't even know. Um, this is just really screwed up. You can see it in the light. Um, here it is in a different lighting. Yeah, I, I don't even know what this is, but this is all very rusty. It seems like the rustiest area of the tank is right around the pump. And this doesn't even look like rust, it's like bright orange. And then this yellow stuff is, is like the varnish uh, that gets left behind by fuel. You can see how corroded this terminal is. Um, the jacketing on the wiring was going to crap. Yeah, so this is bad. Um, yeah, definitely needs to be changed. Look at the sock. The sock is completely gone. The strainer is not there. So, I mean, basically for the best that the car didn't run because otherwise they would have been running it like this and sucking up junk. Just absolute junk. Um, so def definitely sat for a long time. This seal has seen better days. Uh, I think I'm just going to order a new one. They're only a few bucks. And let me show you inside the tank. Yeah, so down in there, especially where the, where the pump was, is what looks the worst. Um, doesn't even so much look like rust. Like I said, it looks like some weird varnishy grossness. Over there, there's a lot of particulate matter. Uh, but again, the tank doesn't look that rusty. It's, it's certainly serviceable. Uh, you know, a little bit of rust in your fuel will just get uh, trapped by the filter. It's not a big deal. Looks okay over there. You know, that doesn't look terribly, terribly rusty. It's hard to see everything, obviously. But this is definitely the worst part. I'm going to try to clean the tank as best as I can. I don't know if I'll make a whole how-to on it because I'm not an expert on it and it's mostly just going to be a pain in the butt. I can't even reach in there. So this is mostly going to be done via just uh, spraying chemicals and, and probably water in there and, and cleaning the heck out of it. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty gross. 
glad I'm glad I'm doing this. Uh, you can see that's part of the sock right there, completely degraded. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pump came out really easy though. The tank, like I said, overall good condition. I probably will pull the sending unit. As far as I know, it was working, but it looks like it's going to need to be cleaned. So that's where I'm at. I also find this pretty funny. Somebody, I mean, this is almost certainly a replacement pump since the tank was taken out, and uh, this, I don't know, it doesn't look great to me. But anyway, they clamped the line, but they forgot to bring this clamp back down, so it wasn't even clamped properly. Uh, so who knows if all the fuel is even getting to the car, but, you know, that's where the tip of the pump ends, so it could have easily been squirting right past that and going back into the tank, so. Sweet. I'm probably going to pull the pump off the bracket now and uh, bench test it, and I'll throw that in this video so you can see if this pump even bothers to try to run, but it, it looks pretty clear to me that it's in crap condition and that wiring was bad, so. Tis what it is. So I've got a battery here, and I got the pump, and I got this kind of just wire with clamps. So I'm gonna clamp and wire and pump. Um, basically, just positive on positive, negative on negative, and I wanted to do it away from most of the fumes. And it shouldn't really matter which way I hook these up. It's a motor, so it should run if it if it works. But uh, I believe the bigger terminal is negative on on these pumps, so I'm gonna do it that way. Sparks and nothing. So confirmed that this motor is just trashed. Um, you know, this pump probably completely seized with rust stuff like that. Not even trying. And the other way. Nope, nothing. And you want to be real careful not to touch these together. <laughs> That'll create quite a spark. So there you have it. This pump is 100% confirmed garbage. Um, Got to clean out the tank. New pump is on the way. New fuel pressure regulator to cope with the pump is on the way. And uh, I will have an upgraded fuel system in this car, so if this engine stays, it'll have plenty of fuel. If a new engine comes in, it will have plenty of fuel. I mean, literally, the pump I'm getting can allegedly support, you know, 600 plus horsepower, which I will never put into this car that I can see. Uh, but that's fine. I'd rather have more fuel available than less. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to stress out the fuel system for no reason, uh, but it's not gonna kill anything, you know what I mean? Like, basically, there were no better options for the same price. Even, even pumps that put out less than what I paid, so. You guys will definitely be seeing what exactly I bought for this car when I get it. See, this is why this can't be rust, because everything here is stainless. Like, I'm 90% sure. And watch that, it just comes right off. And then what you're left with is, is shiny steel. That would not happen if it was rust. And now maybe this is coated steel, but if it's coated, um, then it won't rust. You know what I'm saying? And like even these lines, they're not rusted. You know what I mean? This one, look at look at how shiny it is underneath. So obviously this is like some kind of, you know, it's basically varnish. Uh, maybe that's what they usually refer to as varnish. I thought it was that yellow stuff. I guess that's maybe like sulfur from the gasoline. But all this comes right off. So that's great, because this is going to be, you know, this is going to be easy cleanup. Just a wire brush. And none of this is rusty, it's all fine. I think the inside of the tank is more or less the same. Even down here, even where it's real grody. Comes right off, you get shiny metal. So, this rubber thing is is jacked. It's completely melted. Um, it just, you know, it does not maintain its shape anymore. So no matter what, I think the kit I ordered comes with one of these. If not, I'll, I'll get a new one. Um, but yeah, so this will all clean up nicely. I do need to um, replace this wiring, which... I'll most oh yeah this is look at that there's barely anything left um, so I'll be drilling that out or maybe just putting a bolt straight through it but more likely I'll drill this out uh, you know clip off this little side of it so I can get out that rivet and I'll put a bolt through there to get brand new wiring on it um, and then as for the uh, the negative wire which comes down. Oh, see, it's just grounded to the whole thing. Um, so, 
yeah, I can, basically the whole thing is grounded. I can basically put another bolt through there or even bolt it to a bigger spot like right there and bolt it down real securely just as long as I get a good ground uh, and I'll obviously replace it up here. I'll drill it out uh, same way as the inside and uh, replace that to get a solid ground. And then I'll obviously test it before I put it in the tank. So check this out guys, I was just out doing some measurements on the MR2. It does use a 3 inch um, air filter. This one, the one that was on it, is the Intimidator, which that's a suitably 80s font. But this thing has seen much better days. It's, it's literally got um, like mold and moss on it. Um, and there's a lot of like little holes in it. Nothing really like fixable, you know. And so this is the air filter for the Eclipse. Um, so it's almost identical. Except it has the plastic end cap, and I actually like that because as you can see, all these cheap chrome end caps end up rusting over time. Um, and so I prefer the plastic, honestly. Um, and this is the same 3 inch. The only difference is that the Eclipse filter is ever so slightly smaller. If you see, this comes up just a little bit higher. So ever so slightly less surface area. This is still a huge filter for that MR2 for a 1.6 liter. This is huge. But I'm going to buy the same filter I bought for the Eclipse for the MR2 because it was cheap. I like the quality. And then this is what they were using as the um, actual tube to the throttle body. And I'm confident that this is literally like a sewer coupler. Um, Fernco 2 inch to 2 inch. Um, yeah, so that's just sad. It's, it's a sad coupler. You can see how bent it was. Um, I mean, you know, again, this wouldn't really restrict airflow to the engine enough to matter, except for maybe really high RPM, but it's just in really rough shape using standard hose clamps. They had tapped the size for the vacuum fitting and put RTV all over it. Very bad, very gross. Like, this is just not good. Um, so, why do I have this stuff out? To take measurements and make sure I buy the right stuff. It'll be getting replaced. So, even if this engine's dead, um, it'll look good when I confirm it. I guess. Besides, it's not like proper silicone couplers and T-bolt clamps and air filters can't be reused, so no huge loss. All right, it like paid me to do so, but I put that pathetic stuff back on the MR2 for now, just so critters can't crawl into the T-viz intake. And uh, now I just gotta clean up my tools real quick, and then I'm gonna slosh some stuff around in the tank and gonna call it. So I want to put something in this tank to kind of clean it out, and I don't have any of the professional acids or anything like that. I've heard that both white vinegar and apple cider vinegar are good at cleaning rust. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of both because some people say apple cider works better. And then I'm gonna put in a little bit of evaporust, um, not a ton, but this will just be my little custom cocktail to kinda try to clean this beast out. I'll slosh it around, let it sit at least overnight, and then uh, come back to it. I just got attacked by a massive moth. There he is. Look at that. And my alarm's going off. And then a little bit of evapor rust. Ooh, all over my shoe and all over the ground, of course. Yeah, see, look at that. Look how nice the rest of the tank. It's like cleaning up. It's mostly grime. And then this area, you know, a little bit, but not as much. Well, actually, yeah, it's cleaning up kind of good. Check this out, guys. I mean, that stuff basically like scrapes right off and reveals pretty good metal so weird all right folks that's gonna be all for today I'm not sure how long this is gonna be as is but I hope you enjoyed this uh, like extra part of my MR2 vlogs and uh, I think it was a pretty successful day I got the tank out uh, made sure that the pump was dead uh, have parts on order so that should be here later this week uh, thank you again to anybody who did join the live stream today. Sorry, the recorded version of it got screwed up. Not that most of you would go back and watch it again, but to anybody who wanted to watch it. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more live streams like that. I definitely plan to do it for major events like first starts of Project Cars. 
But uh, if you just want to see more of that in general, let me know for sure. Hey, if you guys made it all the way to the end of this video and you want to, can you please write down in the comments, yo, that garage still needs some work. Uh, maybe that'll help me get motivated to finish clearing this space. Part of the plan is I don't want to keep working on the MR2 in the driveway. I want to install my recovery winch, as I'm calling it, and then bring the MR2 into the garage. If not for reinstalling the fuel tank, at least for doing stuff like drilling out the bolts to reinstall the uh, cover pans underneath because a lot of bolts were broken by the previous owner and two by me can't save them all thank you so much for watching as always everyone please like the video comment i will get back to you subscribe notifications bell all that good stuff please let me know once again if you would like to go to a car meet at the berlin walmart super center on the 12th of august which is a saturday i'm probably going to try to get vermont car club involved too which i don't know exactly what their deal is but hopefully they'd have some cool cars to bring thank you so much i'll catch you soon on 802 garage Check this out, doesn't this look like a Cyclops clown or something? Or not a Cyclops, a cyborg? Like look at that, he's got like a like a super scanner and a weird headpiece but like a big nose. I, I don't know, whatever.